Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, greetings one and all, and welcome to day number one. Yes, day number one, week 15 of our joining together. And it's definitely a delight to have each and every one of you here. Um, what I have on the screen, I don't want you to write. I don't want you to write, so you don't have to write this down. Um, I just want to see if you know how to do it. So right inside the chat, A, B, or C, which letter of the shape has the line of symmetry? That's everyone, please, right inside the chat. Um, write the letter of the shape that has a line, a line of symmetry, right? Put your hands inside the chat for me, please, if you're A, B, or C. Again, you don't have to write this down. I just want to see if you know how to do it. Um, put your hands inside the chat. Um, Write which letter has a line of symmetry. A, B, C, A, B, or C. All right. Which letter has a line of symmetry? A, B, or C. All right, so I see a few persons answering. Um, which I think is, is it A, B, C, A, B, or C? Which one has a line of symmetry? Anyone can answer? Anyone can answer, which, which I think, which one has a line of symmetry? A. A, okay, good. And the reason why it's A is because if you look carefully, this is one line of symmetry. We can put it at the middle. There's the, this is not the only one. Are there other lines of symmetry for the shape? Yes, sir. Okay. What other lines of symmetry do we have that we can do? Uh, how many? How many you think it have in total? By the way, what's the name of the shape? What's the name of the shape? Anyone can answer. You ought to speak to me now. What's the name of the shape? A hexagon. Very good. It's a, it is a hexagon because it has six sides. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So how many lines of symmetry does this hexagon have? Any idea? Any idea? Two. Two? No, it has more than two. Six. Six. Why you say six? Because the shape with because the shape with um, the amount of sides has the amount of lines of symmetry. You sure about that? What an equilateral shape, if I mean. Equilateral shape? What do you mean by equilateral shape? All sides are equal. So you mean a regular polygon? Yes, sir. Good. So for all regular polygons, they have this, the same number of sides that they have is the same number of lines of symmetry that they have. So if we look at um, this shape, this is a regular hexagon. So it's going to have six lines of symmetry. Let's do another one. Um, again, put your hands inside the chat, please. Write the letter. Is it A, B, or C that has a line of symmetry? Again, write the letter, L -A, whether it's A, B, or C, that has a line of symmetry. Put your answers out of chat, please. I need everyone answering. I need everyone answering, please. I need everyone answering. Put your hands inside the chat. Which one of these, whether it's A, B, or C, which one of these has a line of symmetry? All right. Put your hands inside the chat. Um, Nevea says C. Tibet says C. Rashid says C. Iman C. Kevin C. Ciara C. Um, where's Joseph? Joseph, you need to answer. You're not answering inside the chat. And all right, 
Neville, why did you say C? Nivea or Nivea? Yes, sir. Why did you say C? You don't know? Anyone want to help her? Why is C the answer? Because if you cut it in half, either way, it's symmetrical. All right, then. So if we, if we cut it like this, Right, that's a line of symmetry. And so the answer here is C. So that means that, or we could cut it like that. So it has two lines of symmetry. And I think we have another one. How about this one? What chance is that, Jack, please? Which shape has a line of symmetry? Is it A, B, or C? What chance is that, Jack, please? Which shape has a line of symmetry? Is it A, B, or C? I need everyone to answer, please. I need everyone to answer. Put inside the chat, what is the correct answer? Is it A, B, or C? Which shape has a line of symmetry, do you think? Is it A, B, or C? Which shape has a line of symmetry? Is it A, B, or C? LaVar Brown, are you there? Yes, sir. Um, did you answer that the chat? No, sir. Why not? Hello, why not, LaVar? Because I was finishing up my own work. No, you can't be doing homework in my class. You do it either do homework before or after. So if you can't be distracted. If you can't be a part of the class, then tell him, I mean, you can't. You don't, you don't want to be a part of it. But don't be wasting my time with yours. So put your hands inside the chat, please, the bar. Which shape has the line of symmetry? Now, I was up, excuse, but you're doing homework. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. A lot of too much slick, slick, slick tricks. Again, Lavar, put your hands inside the chat, please. Which shape has a line of symmetry? Okay, Lavar, why did you put C? Does C have a line of symmetry? Yeah, so. How does C have a line of symmetry? Look at it. If you cut it in half, are the two sides the same? Hello, you gotta talk to me now, Lava. If you cut the shape in half, are the two sides the same? No, sir. Okay, so it can't be C. So pick another one. B. B, very good. So the answer here is B. I mean, how many persons had B for the answer? I did. Okay, very good, Casey. Anyone else? Add B for the answer. I did. Okay, good. So let's do one more. Right inside the chat, which shape has a line of symmetry? Again, right inside the chat, which shape has the line of symmetry? Is it A, B, or C? Again, put your hands inside the chat, which shape has the line of symmetry? Is it A, B, or C? Again, you don't have to write this down. I'm going to tell you when you need to start writing down notes. Again, put chance inside the chat. Which shape has the line of symmetry? Which shape has the line of symmetry? Um, Joseph, where's Joseph? Yes, did you answer inside the chat? Yes, sir. Okay, what did you put? I put A. Okay, why do you think it's A? 
So you put a line uh, down in the middle and on the... Uh, and, and across? Yeah, and across. It's not here. Yeah, so? So it is A, you can put one line in the middle and you can put the other one across, okay? So that's it for lines of symmetry. So that's how we, that's how we do. Do y'all understand lines of symmetry? Hello, I'm speaking to you all. Yes, sir. Symmetry. Yes, sir. All right, so, so let's move on to our next one. We're gonna go on, let's head up properly. Uh, so, let's go. So today is, Today is Monday, the 4th of December, 2023. The subject is, of course, um, mathematics. And we're going to begin with section one. Now for section one, we're going to be looking at consumer math. Uh, we're going to be looking at what we call consumer math. Right, so that's going to be for section one, we call consumer math. So section one is consumer math. So write this down for me, please. So section one is consumer bar. So it says, the question says a store All right, so session one says the store bought 450 copies of a textbook, right? Um, and the chart shows uh, the weekly sales of that textbook. So altogether, the store bought um, 450 of the textbooks, right? 450 of the textbooks. Now we're gonna construct a table, right? We're gonna construct the table to basically outline like, you know, what happened in terms of how it was sold. So we're gonna show a table that's basically gonna show like what happened during each week in terms of sales for the book, all right? So if we look at this table and please draw the table as well. So the table has one heading, the first one is week, all right? So it tells you, you know, week one, week two, week three, all right, so week. And the next one is number of copies sold, so you have 95, 126, and 83. Yes, Clement? Do you write a sentence on top of the graph? Yes, you write it on top of the graph, or on top of the table. Um, so on week one, Adrian, on week one, how many number of copies were sold on week one of the book? Adrian, are you there? Can I have from Adrian? Yes, Adrian. Yeah. In week one, how many number of copies of the book were sold? 95. 95, very good. Ajani, in week two, how many number of copies were sold? In week two? 126. 126, very good. And a hero in week three, how many number of copies of the textbook were sold? 
Thank you. Akiro, are you there? That's all. In week three, how many number of copies of the book were sold? 83. 83, very good. It, it, Akiro, are you writing this down? Yes, sir. Are you writing all of it? Yes, sir. Okay, good. And um, Ainge, Aliyah, Aliyah, what are you doing? Aliyah, star? I'm still on unit. Okay. Um, Angel. Yes, sir. Um, in total, how many books did the store buy? <laughs> Hero, I mean, not you, Angel. In total, how many books did the store buy? Hello, Angel, are you there? Um, 304. No. Read the question. What does it say? Oh, 450. 450. 450. Very good. So the star boy, how many? How many? 450. Very good. Chai. In total, how many books did the star buy? Chai, are you there? I can't have from Chai. Presenti. Where's Presenti? 304. No, Chai. I said, how many books did the store buy? You have to read the question. Um, Kivet Presenti. In total, how many books did the store buy? 515. Say it again. 515. No, that's not correct. Read the question. What does it say? 450. Sir. 450. So, Jai, in total, how many books did the store buy? 450. Good. Um, Pat again. Akiro. Akiro. Yes, sir. In total, how many books did the store buy? It's right there in the question. You read the question, the first sentence. Yes, sir. How many books did the store buy? It's right there. 450. Good, 450. And Joseph, how many books were sold in week one? Joseph is right there on the on the screen. How many books were sold in week one? 95. Good. Sierra, how many books were sold in week two? 126. And Clamon, how many books were sold in week three? 83. 83, good. So now the question asks you, right? The question asks us right, to calculate um calculate the let's see. The question asks us to calculate the number of textbooks um, that were left after three weeks. So again, you have a store. By the way, write this down. Please write down the, the, the bottom part. Calculate the number of textbooks that were left that were left after three weeks of sale. So you have a store. It sold 95 copies of a book in Week one, it sold 126. In week two, it sold 83. In week three, and we know it's a total of 450. So it says calculate the number of textbooks that were left after the three weeks of sales. So Chardonnay, are you there? Where's Chardonnay? Yes, yeah, so 
Um, you've been missed. How are you doing? Pardon me? I said, you've been missed. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How was the exams? They were okay. Did you fail them? I passed them. <laughs> okay. All right. Calculate the number of textbooks that were left after three weeks of sales. What, what do you think we have to do? We have to subtract the number, I mean, the number of copies sold from the number of copies that they bought. Good. So how we can find the number of copies sold? You have to add 95, 126, and 83. Very good. That's a very good point you've made right there. Um, so Clement, do you agree with that? If so, explain why do you agree? If not, if you disagree, explain. Yes, sir. Because if you add those numbers up and subtract it by 450, you get your answer. Very good. And Nevea, can you explain how we're going to get our answers for this? Nevea, pardon. Yes, sir. Can you explain how we're going to get our answer? You subtract the number of copies they have by the ones they sold. Okay, so how are we going to get the number of copies that they have? You add 95, 126, and 83. Okay, good. So let's add that. Um, she said we, we get add four. Four. When you add them, what you get? Three and four. 304, you sure that's the correct thing when you add them? I already said that answer. Yeah. You sure? Sure that's the we correct sure. answer? We sure. <laughs> yes, sir. We sure. Yes, sir. We sure. Okay, let's add it. Let's add it. Let me see if you don't know how to add. Let's just let's see. So we have um, 95 um, plus 126 plus what? 83. And so, what is five plus six? It's going to be one. Five plus six is what? Eleven. Eleven, very good. And then we want to add three, that's going to be what? Fourteen. 14. So we put the four down. And we put the one above, right? Now, what is nine plus one? 10. 10, very good. Um, plus two? 12. 12 plus eight? 20. 20, very good. And so we put the zero down. We put the what? Two above. Um, what is two plus one? Three. Three. So it's going to be three, zero, four. How many persons had that? Three, zero, four. Let me know if you have that. I did. I did. Very good. Three. So write this down, please. Write this down. Write this down. Write this um, question down. The total number of copies after three weeks of sales is going to be what? 300. I mean, 95 plus 126 plus 83, which gives us what? Three hundred and four. Yeah. four copies. Very good. Now, are we done? No, sir. No, we're not done, right? We're no. not complete. No, we're not done. What do we need to do at this point? Subtract two hundred four from four fifty. Very good, the subtractions in four from 450, okay? And so let's do that. When we subtract 450 and 304, let's see if we can. So we have 450. Minus 304. Zero minus four is what? Zero. No, definitely. 
Oh, negative four. Okay, so we can't do that, right? So we have to what? Borrow. This will be this will be five, and this will be one. And ten minus four is what? Six. Six. Okay. Six. That's one hundred and forty. And so four minus zero is going to be what? Four. Four. And four minus three is what? One. One. So the answer is going to be what? One hundred and what? Forty-six. 146. My process got that. 146. I did. I did. Very good. So write this down. The number of textbooks that were left after three weeks of sale is going to be 450 minus 304, which is 150, 146 copies. All right. And so that's how we do that. Make sure I write this down for me, please, before I move this slide. Again, make sure I write this down for me before I move this slide. All right, uh, so are we done with the slide? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, no, sir. No? Okay. Rashad, can you explain how we got 156 as our answer? 156? 156, sorry. All right, so. As we can clearly see, the instruction says a bookstore bought 450 copies of a textbook. Now, it's showing the chart shows the weekly sales of that textbook, right? 
So we gotta calculate how much week one get plus week two plus um week three, mm -hmm. right? So after we, we get our total answer, then mm -hmm. I get four fifty. So like we gotta do, we gotta put four hundred and fifty over the top, and then the answer we get from our those three weeks of supplies mm -hmm. below four fifty. And mm -hmm. just subtract it, subtract it, you know. Mm -hmm. So you get your answer. Probably get one for one forty-six. Very good. Thank you, Richard. Um, Kiajane, do you understand how we got one forty-six? Yes. Sir. Um, how about you, Samaya? Do you understand how we got one forty-six? Yes. Sir. And um, Dwayne, Dwayne, Stu, are you there? Yes, sir. Do you understand how we got 146? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Is there anyone who do not understand? If you don't understand, let me know. Akiro, do you understand how we got 146? I don't understand. Okay, Lavar, say you don't understand. Okay, good. Yes, sir. So, Lavar, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, add 95, 126, and 83. When we add 95, 126, and 83, what's the answer, Baba? We add those three numbers. What do we get? 304. 304, very good. Now, the number of books that they had all, all together that they bought was 450. So you have to take 304 and do what with it? You have to do what? Subtract. Subtract it, right? Subtract it from what? Get the answer. Okay, so 450 minus what? 304. Good. Now, when you subtract 450 by, by 304, what your answer is? 146. And so that's how we got 146. The first thing we do is we add the three numbers. Whatever our result is, we subtract it by the total number of books that was bought. Do you understand that now? A little bit. A little bit. The only two things you need to do, add it first and then subtract it. So let me just do another example, right? And so for this example, I want you all to, we're gonna read it and then, um, then we're gonna actually do it. I also want you to put your answer inside the chat. So whatever you think um, the answer is, put inside the chat. So. Um, Gianna, can you read this question, please? Wait, 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 no, this is the same one. Let's do another one. Let's do another one. But read, read, um, read this one. Gianna. Gianna, are you there? Where's Gianna? Gianna Nixon, are you there? Gianna from Gianna. So, Dion, can you read this question, please? This is a date. Go ahead. Uh, after the person you don't select to read, I can calculate it. Yeah, put your hands inside the chat. Answer it and put your hands inside the chat, please. Um, Dion, can you read example two? Yes, sir. A bookstore bought three, 360 copies of a textbook. The chart shows weekly sales of the textbook, of that textbook. Mm -hmm. calculate, calculate the number of textbooks that were left after three, the, after three weeks of sales. Yeah, you didn't read the table. Week one is 97. Oh. Week, week one, 97. Week two, 122. Week three, 79. Very good. So if you think you understand what to do, Work it out and put your hands inside the chat for me, please. Again, work it out and put your hands inside the chat for me. We know that the store sold, well, bought 360 copies of a textbook. Um, week one, they sold 97. Week two, they sold 1.2. Week three, they sold 79. So how many textbooks were left after three weeks? Okay. How many textbooks were left after three weeks? Again, put your hands inside the chat. The chat, please add, um, answer it and put your answer inside the chat. Also, please write down this example. You're going to need it. Um, 
Sierra Rapley, do you understand what to do? Yes, sir. Okay, um, Destiny, do you understand what to do? Yes, sir. Okay. Evanis, do you understand what to do? Where's Evanis? Yes, sir. Okay, and... Evanis, what do you want on that um, paper that I gave you? What topic are you on? On Twitter, let me know what topic you want to be, Evanis. Sorry, um, the solving linear equation. Okay, which ones have you have I given you the solutions for? Like, which ones have I checked? Only after. Simplifying. Simplifying. Um, expression. Okay. Did um, did you check your work with the solutions with that? Yes, sir. I know that you do. Not too bad. Not too bad. Do you understand how it is? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Um. Let me um, let me send you the. I want you to continue with that paper. I want to say, I'm going to send you the rest. You say you want to solve it, right? Solve it in the equations. That's yes, all. Okay, I need you to finish. I need you to finish that. Do as much as you can tonight. I'm going to send you the solutions for you, okay? And if you have any questions, please let me know. Have any. Um, yes, like I said, put your hands inside the chat. I see. Kevin said 62. Chai said 62. Clement said 62. Kavet said 62. Chardonnay 62. Rashad 62. Why everybody saying 62? That's the answer, sir. That's the answer. That's the answer. You think that's the answer? You sure? Okay, we Casey. sure. We were 100% sure. Okay, explain to me, Casey, how you get um, 62. What's the first thing you got to do? Go ahead, Casey. Explain how we get 60. First, this is what you are like. Are you on a sport, man? To be your male body. I had 97, 122, and 79. Mm -hmm. And then I had to get... I had to get 298. Mm -hmm. Then I subtract 360 and 298. And then I'd get 62. Very good. Very good. So the first thing we do is 92, 122, and 79. That gives us 298. Okay. And then we subtract 360 and 298 to get 62. All right. So that's how we do that. How many persons got 62? Let me know. You got 62. I did. Okay. Very good. I did. Very good. Um, I need Joseph, those of you, do you understand how to do this? Joseph. Oh, yeah, I understand. Pardon? Yes, sir, I understand. Okay, that's good. And Adrian, do you understand? Adrian, do you understand how, to, how we got our answer? Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, well, then. Um, Lavar, can you explain how we got 62, please? Um, we calculate the number of textbooks that we have to make out the sale. Uh, and then we, at the end of,
I can't hear your mic muted. Ravaya mic is muted. Then Here we are of the total weeks, and then we get our answer, which is 97. Then we add 97 plus the second week of the coffee is sold, and then we add the third week of no, um of coffee sold, and the answer is 298 coffees. And the number of textbooks that were left after three weeks of sale was... Uh, yeah, uh, um, yeah, it's not, yeah, it's not, yeah. Was what? Which, and then no, we had the, um, we had the, um, subtract that by our uh, answer before, and then yeah. the answer for that is 62 copies. Very good. Much better. All right, do we have example two already written? No, sir. No? Okay. Who's still writing this? Who's still writing this down? Let me know. Anyone still writing this down? I'm still writing it down. Okay. Anyone finished with this slide? Hello, is there anyone who's finished with this slide? Yes, sir. Only one person finished? Come on, y'all have to yes, answer sir. me, please. Yes, sir. All right. All All right, so let's look at this last example, um, example number three. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a screenshot of this so you can have it for those of you who do not have this one. All right, so let's look at um, this last one. I just finished. Okay, good. Um, Ajani, read this one, please. Example number three. Let's start what? By the way, please do this and um, put your hands inside the chat. Also, write this down, please. A bookstore bought 420 copies of a textbook. The, sh the chart shows the weekly sales of that textbook. What are the weekly sales? Week one sold 99 Week one sold 99 copies, week two sold 186 copies, and week three sold 75 copies. Very good. So we need to calculate the number of copies that were left, right? So Okay. All right, so I need you to take it. I need you to um, answer this and put your hands inside the chat for me, please. I also need you to write this down inside of your book. All right, so once you finish with this work, take a picture. Uh, not take a picture. Put your hands inside the chat for me.
Good deed. Well. Where your boy get it from? I don't know. Oh, sorry. Don't call him your boy. His name is right there. Sorry, I miscalculated. You miscalculated. By the way, please, um, please write down this um third example. Don't just do the calculation. Write down the third example. Um, I need, I need um Kvet to explain how she got sixty. I added ninety nine. 186 and 75 together. And I subtracted. What you got when you added them? When you, what you got when you added them together? So I got 360. Okay. Um, I subtracted 40, 420 and 30, 360 together and got um, 60. Very good. Anyone else got 60? Because 60 is the correct answer. Anyone else got 60? I did. I Very, did. Good. Yeah, sure. Very good. Very good. Very um, good. Do me a favor. I need you to take a picture of your work and send it to me via WhatsApp again. Take a picture of your notes. I need to see all three, all three, all three notes. All three. Um, I need to see all three, all three examples, including the first one. All right. Um, Stacy, can you explain how you got how we got our answer sixty? Again, Stacy Bender, can you explain how we got sixty copies? Can I? Can I? Okay. For the sixty copies, we added the whole total, which was the one sixty. And how much does the bookstore bought, which was bought money, and we subtract um the three sixty by the bought money, which is the sixty copies. I right, guess so you add them first and then you subtract it. Yes, um, sir. Very good. Um, Samaya, can you explain how we got sixty? First, you have to add up all the number of copies that were sold, 99, 186, and 75. You get your answer, 360 copies. Then you have to, then you have to subtract 420, subtract it by 360, and that gives us 60 copies. Very good. Um, I need you all to take a picture of your work and send it to me via WhatsApp. Again, take a picture of all of the notes and send it to me via WhatsApp. I only see certain people doing that. Um, where's Korai? Where's Korai? Korai, are you there? Oh my God, he was here. Um, Matthew, do you understand how we got our answer of 60? Hello, Matthew, do you understand how we got our answer of 60? Is Matthew. is Matthew there? Oh, his mic is working. Okay. Do you understand how we got um, 60? Okay. Um, I, need to, I need you to take a picture of your work and send it, please. That's everyone. I only got from Chai, Navea, uh, so far. I need the rest of you to um, take a picture of your work and send it to me. Samaya, where's your notes, Shadne? Um, Shakaina Kalma, are you there? Where's Shakaina? Yes, sir. Do you understand how we got 60 copies? Yes, sir. Okay, I need you to take a picture of your work. And Kiajane, where's your notes? Dwayne Slu, where's your notes? Akiro Pedican. I mean, not, not Akiro Pedican. Akiro. Oh, I'm still writing. Okay, well, you need to hurry up. I'm on the home. I'm so deep. I get these notes tonight, you know, Akiro. 
I know you could try and make up all type of excuses, but I get in these notes tonight. Or do you're not leaving my class. Um, do please do not, do not, do not do that. Sorry. Don't change your tone with me, please. Because you're trying to act like you dead in the sense. When there's multiple times I catch you trying to trick me. Therefore, I do not trust you. Um, Ashanti and make sure I have all of your notes for these. Make sure I have all of your notes. I have all of them. All right, so what I, what I think we need to do now is we need to do a quiz on this. So I'm gonna give you all a quiz on this. I need you all to do the quiz and take a screenshot of your grade. So, so I'm gonna give you all a quiz on, on this information that we just did. It's pretty simple, nothing to it. Hopefully everyone get all right. Um, Ashan, Ashan, Ashtan Web, I will send all of them. Wait, 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 when I um, give them the quiz. All right, are y'all ready for the quiz? Let me know. No, sir. No, not yet. Yes, sir. You ready? Okay, you ready. Okay. Just don't feel it. Yeah. All right. So let's see. Yeah. Okay, I think this is good. No, this is the wrong one. Packaging. Okay. All right, good. So I'm gonna take a I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the 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 link of the quiz inside the chat. All right, again, I'm gonna put the link of the quiz inside the chat and I need you all to do it. All right. It's out of 10, so that means in order for you to pass, you need to get uh what 80% or above, the eight out of ten and above. So let me send it inside the chat. Once you have Start the quiz, please put started inside the chat again. Once you've started the quiz, please put started inside the chat. And once you have finished, take a screenshot of your work and send it to me via WhatsApp. Again, once you've started the quiz, please put started inside the chat. And once you are completed with the quiz, I need you to take a screenshot of your work and send it to me via WhatsApp. All right. Again, please do the quiz that's in, that's inside the chat. Make sure you do the quiz inside the chat, please. Once you've started the quiz, please put started inside the chat for me. Excuse me, Mr. Petit. Go ahead. Can you um, send the quiz to my phone, please? Uh, what's, what's the name? Nevio. Oh, Nivea, that's correct. I just did. All right, for those persons who was who was who still need the photos of the for those persons who need the photos of the of this the work I put it I, I'm gonna post inside a chat. Um that's clear that's the example three. Example two is this one. Example one is that
right then. All right, make sure that you do the quiz properly. Uh, make sure you, you do the quiz properly. Once you are finished with the quiz, I need you to take a screenshot of your grade and send it into the WhatsApp. And if you want, you can even put your grade inside of the chat. Again, take a, take a photo of your work and send them to you. What's up? All right, once you finish with your work, take a picture of it and send it to me via WhatsApp. Again, once you finish your work, take a picture of it and send it to me via WhatsApp. I need to see a photo of your grade as well. Whatever grade you got, I need to see a photo of it. So take a screenshot of your Grades as well. All right. Um, very good, Maronique. Destiny, Navia, and Dion. Um, Akira, where's Akira? Akira. Yes, sir. Are you doing the quiz? Yes, sir. Okay, what number are you on? Four. Four. Okay. And LeVar, where's LeVar? LeVar Brown? What's the D? Uh-huh. Have you started the quiz? I started the quiz, right? But I was, I have to wait down when we come home to send you the grades and stuff on the notes. Yeah, but have you started the quiz? What number you want? I say number four, sir. Number four. No, not it, not it. I'm talking to start the Levian. No, I I I hear you. Um, um, Levar, Levar. Let's Levar, Levar. Excuse me, Mr. Bajee. Go ahead, go ahead, Ciara. Could you put the link in the chat, please? Yes, I can. Let me, let me, let me repost the picture of the notes. Not of the notes, but of the quiz.
All right, so far I have, Matthew, you need to redo the quiz. I don't understand how, where's Matthew? I don't understand how you get a zero to 10. Very good, Rashid. Um, Excuse me, sir. Yes, Chai. Do you have to write the word copy after every number? No. Very good, Gianna. Very good, Angel. Very good, Rashid. Um, but Prashant, what are you doing? I'm still writing the notes because my phone was acting up. So I'm on the last uh, screenshot. Okay, no problem. Um, Prashant, but that's not what I want you to be working on, though. I need you to work on the, the paper I gave you. Yes, sir. You, you so, need to work on that. You need to finish that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, you need to finish that. Good afternoon, Mr. Patti. Um, yes, yes, Bethany. Notes. Yes, sir. Okay, let me resend that. Thank you. All right, I'm still waiting on the rest of you to take a picture of, of your notes and send them to me. A lot of you are not doing that. I mean, I'm not gonna leave this class until you send me the, the, the picture of the notes. Um, Joseph, Joseph, I need, I need your own thing. I need your, I need your, um, I need your, um, quiz, the quiz grade. Joseph, where's Joseph? Yes, sir. Where's your quiz grade? Have you finished that yet? No, no, sir. I still don't know. What number you want? My persons are finished with the quiz. Let me know if you're finished with the quiz. Anyone is done with the quiz? All right, let me ask this again. Is there anyone who is finished with their quiz? Let me know, please. I'm done. I'm finished. Done. Okay. And pass. And pass. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, did y'all send your notes as well? Yes, yes sir. Okay, um, yes, sir. Come on, how do you get a four out of ten in my quiz? Let's climb on. Climb on, Knight, are you there? Yes, sir. How do you get a four out of ten? Well, on two questions, I placed an eight instead of a seven. Oh.
I'm Rashad, did you, what did you get on the quiz? So bit my answer right now. Akira, what did you get on the quiz? I don't know if Dan saw. Yeah, that's good. So, Vadita just finished. Okay, what's your guy? 100% sure you crossed the board. That's good. Very good. All right, so let's, let's continue. For those who are still working on the notes and, and the quiz, please continue to do that, but we have to move on. All right, so let's continue. Um, so we did that. That was section. That was that section. Let's move on to the next one. Um, the next part that we want to look at. Let's see. So we did consumer map with packaging. Not with packaging, but with you know the textbooks and stuff. Um, let's take a look at uh, section two. We're going to call it. Um, Prime factorization. So let's call this. Excuse me, Mr. Bade. Go ahead. Can I use the bathroom, please? Yes, you can. Mr. Bade. Go ahead. Question: Them two links you sent inside the chat. It was for the same thing or two different. That is that the same. Um, with this. That's a All right. Write this down for me, please. This is section two. We can write this down for me, section two. Um, so actually, we're going to be looking at prime factorization and index form. Now, some of you, the good thing is that some of you have already done this with me in class. Like for those of for those of you who come who come early, right? You already done it. Um, so if you know what we mean by prime factorization, can you tell me what we mean by prime factorization? Anyone who know what we mean by prime factorization? Taking a number and turning into multiple prime numbers. Okay, I think I can accept that. Taking a number and breaking it down into multiple prime numbers. And we have to use which operation when we um, combine in those prime numbers? Division. No. Use the division, use the division to divide it, to break it down. And I mean, to string together those prime numbers, what do we, what operation do we have between them? All right, so let's write down the first definition. I want um, Ajani. Ajani, did you send in your notes? Yes, Ajani. I haven't sent them yet. Are you finished with them? Yes, sir. But you need to send them, Ajani. I've been saying that for the last, I've been saying that for a very long time. Send your notes, man. You know, you like the Emmy Rao. I don't understand it. Um, Akiro, can you read this for me, please? The first, first, first um, point, prime factorization. By the way, write this down for me, please. Everyone write this down. Prime factorization is a way of expressing, of expressing a number as a product of its prime factors. The prime factors of a number or the prime numbers start to multiply to get the original number. The prime factorization of 30 is two times three times five. Very good. Again, please write this down and make sure I write this down, write it down, right? So if we look at 30, right? If we look at 30. Um, what numbers, what numbers you could use to break down 30, right? What numbers you could use? Two and fifteen. Two and fifteen. No, let's use something a little more common. What numbers we could use? Five. Five and what? Six. Five and six. Six. Very good. So we could break down thirty as five and six. Good. Now, what can we? Can we break down um, six? Yes. 
Okay, good. How can we write down six? Six is what? Two and three. Two and three. Very good. Two. We were gonna say. What else we gonna say? So six is two times three. Now five. Can we break down five some more? No, sir. No, because if we break it down, it'll still be. Um, we will be using the one-time tables, and we can't use the one-time tables. So that means that thirty. Thirty equals to. Thirty equals to two times three times five. That's what 30 is, two times three times five. And that's why we say the prime factorization of 30 is two times three times five, right? Good. Um, Angel, can you read, Angel, can you read um, the first point again, please, about prime factorization? Mr. Bhutti. Go ahead, Angel. Where's Angel? Angel? Is Angel there? No, I can't have an Angel. Um, Mr. Bhutti. Go ahead, Lava Brown. We still do on the quizzes. Are you finished with the quiz? There's only one quiz that was there. Yes, sir. Well, finish the quiz first. Once you finish with the quiz, then you can um, do what I'm doing on the board. Um, Bethany. Yes, sir. Can you read the first, um, first point? Pardon me? Can you read the first point, prime factorization? Prime factorization is a way of expression and um, expressing a number as a part, as a part of, it, of its prime factor. The prime factor of the of a number or the prime numbers that are multi, multiple together right. multiply to get the original number. The prime factorization of 30 is 2x3x5. Two, x, three, x, two times 3 times 5. So if we try to get 30, I think we did this in class before um, Bethany. I, I, I think you remember. We just break it down. And we multiply two times three times five to get thirty. Do you remember this, Bethany? Yes, sir. Good. And okay, that percent. Can you read um this the first point? The first sentence. The first, yeah, the first point. Prime factorization is a way of expressing a number as a product of its prime factors. The prime factors of a number are the prime numbers that are multiplied to get the original number. The prime factorization of 30 is 2x3x5. That's that's um it's a multiplication symbol. So you have to say two times three times five. Oh, two times three times five. All right, so that's how we do it. All right, make sure I write this down, please. Again, make sure I write this down. It's a part of your notes. So let's look at the second point, right? So we know the prime factorization is a way how we can um, express a number as a product of its prime factors. So the next point is, what is a prime number? That's the next, like, Real question. What's the prime number? And Chai, can you read um, what a prime number is, please? A prime number is a number that has exactly two factors, one and the number itself. For example, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, and so on are prime numbers. Okay, can you read that like you actually know how to read? Because you sound like you're 
scared to read the game. It is probably to explode. A prime number is a number that has exactly two factors, one and the number itself. For example, two, three, five, seven, eleven. 13, 17, and 19, and so on, are prime numbers. Very good. Good. So, anyone, can you all give me an example of a prime number? Name an example of a prime number. 43. Say it again. 43. 43. Any other example of a prime number? It's 23. 23. 23, 23 is prime, yes. Any, any, any other example? Say it again. 97. 97 is prime, yes. So prime numbers only have two factors, one and itself. Is, is zero a prime number? No, sir. No, no sir. Is, one, is one a prime number? Good afternoon, Mr. No, sir. Good afternoon. Is one a Good. prime number? Being late, but can you please um, send me the notes? Yes, I can. Is one a prime number? No, sir. No, no. good. So prime numbers start at two. Okay. All right, next up. Next person. Um, Ciara Rackley, can you read uh, the third point? In mathematics and Exponential expression. Exponential expression is an expression containing a number, a cause or base, raised. raised to the power of other numbers n, called the ex exponent. exponent or the index. We express the exponential expression exponential expression a to the power of n a s a n as, as, as a to the power of n to the power of n good so that's what i mean by exponential expression if we have a number raised to the power of another number that's what we call an exponential expression write this down for me please so if we have a number raised to the power of another number so for example, if we have two to the power of three, is that an exponential expression? Yes, sir. Yes. How about nine to the power of two? Is that an exponential expression? Yes, sir. Yes. How about uh, five to the power of eight? Is that an exponential expression? Yes, Good. So it's basically a number raised to the power of another number. And you can even multiply them together and screen them together, and it's still an exponential expression. All right. Um, where's Joseph? Joseph, are you there? I need you to I need you to I need you to take a picture of your work of your notes. The notes from, from section two, from section one. Where are they? Uh, I have them. Yes, yeah, so you need to take a picture of them. You need to do. That's all. Um, Sapria. Yes, sir. Do you have access to the eight hundred seven number? Um, not at this moment. I don't have any access to my mother's phone because she went out just now. Oh, okay. 
Oh, I sent the work that I got lab. Okay, let me sign in as the job then. Um, where's Nabea? Oh, on Nabea? Yes, sir. Can you read um the third point for me, please? In mathematics, an exponential expression is an expression containing a number, a, a number called the base raised to the power of another number called the exponent or the index. We express the exponential expression a to the power of n as a to the power of n. Good. Thank you, Nabil. All right, so when we, when we look at prime factorization, I'm not saying I ask you to write it in next form, so you get up to, you know, Express what you have in index form as an exponential it's expression. Nice Go ahead. Oh, um, can you leave really tonight for my, so I can study for my exams tomorrow? Where's your notes? Where's your notes? I have them. Can you take a picture of your notes? Take a picture of your notes, please. And also of the your test grade. Um, Joseph, I need I need your notes, please. All right, Clem one, can you read the fourth one on index form? The index form of a number is the number written as an exp exponential expression or a single number raised to another power. The exponent or index of an exponential Exponential num expression tells us how many times to multiply the base by itself to evaluate the expression. To the two to the power of four, three to the power of five, and two to the power of six times five to the power of three are examples of numbers written in the index form. Very good. Um, Clement, did, did you already finish your um, your your notes? No, sir. I mean this one, I mean the previous one. Yes, sir. Okay. So in next form. So in next form, like, like we have here, it's like two to the power of six times five to the power of three. So you could write a number in the next form. When they say in next form, they mean they mean you have to use the powers, use the powers. Right? Make sure you use the powers if you're trying to write something in next form. All right. That's very important. Um, I need. Destiny, where's destiny? Hello. Um, did you send in your notes? Yes, sir. And uh, what you got in your quiz? One of them. Very good. Can you read the fourth point on the NX form, please? The index form of a number is the number written as an exponent expression or a single number raised to another number. The exponent or end of the exponent expression tell us how many times to multiply the base by itself or evaluate the expression two fourths, three fifths, and two sixths times five thirds as an example of numbers right there in the next one. All right, make sure I write this down, please. Again, make sure I write this down before we move on to the next slide. Um, LeVar Brown, I need your notes, please. Where's LeVar? LeVar Brown? Yes, no, I did get picture of him now. Okay. And Dwayne Slew, where's Dwayne? Dwayne Slew. Yes, sir. Where are your notes? 
I'm still writing them. You know what you always do, Duane? You always say you're still writing, right? And guess what? You never send the work. So guess what? I don't believe you until you send the work. You have to, you have to actually do your work. Dwayne, stop taking shortcuts and stop not doing your work. Because every night you say, oh, I'm still writing, still writing. And I never get the thing you're still writing on. Why is that? Hello, answer me. Why is that? Hello? I can't hear you. Forget. No, you can't be forgetting. You have to actually take a picture of the work. Here's what to do. Take a picture of the work that you have so far. Let me see what you have so far. But I'm still writing. Always oh, lying, man. Um, Dion, did you send a picture of your noses yet? The first set. But not this one. Okay. And um, Joseph. Joseph. Also, I need. I need all three of the examples, not just two of the examples. I need all three. Also, um, where's Evanese? What are you working on now? Evanese, what are you working on now? Yana from Evanese. Gianna, did you send in your work? Not yet. No, I mean the, so... the previous one. You would work the quiz? I know that you didn't send the quiz. Wait, what do you mean? You didn't send the quiz. The quiz grade? Oh, no, I didn't send the quiz grade. Why is that? Um, I don't know. I can send it now. Yes, please send it. Um, Jevin Who's Moss. Thing? That's Jevin. Yes, sir. Where's your work? I just reached home, sir. So, are you writing the notes down? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, Good. All right, so are we done with the slide or, or are you still writing this down? No, sir. I'm in you, Jeff. I'm just reading. Can you put in the chat? You, you want me to um, send the first slides to you, Jeff? Hello, Jeff. You need me to send the first slides? Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Go ahead. Um, can I leave me to go study for my um, exams tomorrow? Did you send in your work? Yes, yeah, sir. All of it? Let me check. Yes, yeah, sir. Okay, you can go. All right. Um, good. So, let me take a screenshot of this and I'm going to move on because we have other questions to do. So, let's move on to the next slide. So, we have good. this question. Hello? I have to leave early too. You have to leave early too. Why is that? Study. Yeah, right. Have you sent in your work? I send in the maths. Okay. All right, you can go. All right, so 
Okay, ready to just, it's fine. And let's look at the first example. So um, I need, what's that mean? I need, Javin, can you read um, the first example, please? Prime factorization. Prime factor, factor. Factorization. Prime factorization of a certain number. Certain number is two times two times three times three times five. Uh -huh. A express this in ex index form. Twice breath expresses. All right, express this in index form. So how are we gonna express this in, in, in index form? We have two to the power, three. we have two times two, three times three and five. How are we gonna express it in index form? How are we gonna do Two times two to, two to the two. power two. Mm -hmm. And then times three to the power of two, then mm -hmm. times five. Times five. Do you all agree with them? Yeah, so. Okay. Anyone else agree with that? What he, what he said? Or no? So, what he said was we're going to say two times two times three times three times five is two to the power of two times three to the power of two times five. All right. So, that's how we, that's how we get it. All right. And Casey, can you explain why we have it just like this? We have, we have them like that because we express them in index form. Okay, good. But why do we have two on top of the two? What does that mean? Like, what does this two tell us? Casey, you don't know? Oh, that two tells us how much tools times what on a number. Very good. So the two tells us that there are two tools, right? And Second what does power. this what does this two tell us tell you? The number of trees. Very good. And three. Have, very good. There are three threes. I mean there are two threes. And we don't have none on top of this, so it's to the power of one. And what does that mean? That means what? There is what? One, one five. five. Good. So the exponents tell you how many numbers do you have, right? Um, where's Kiyajunit? Kiyajunit, do you understand? Kiyajunit, do you understand? Where's Kiyajunit? Yes, sir. You understand how we got two to the second power, three to the second power, and two and times five? Yes, sir. Okay. And Kevin, how about you? Do you understand how we get it? Kevin? That's Kevin. Novea, do you understand how we got our answer? And NX form? Okay. And Chardonnay, do you understand how we got our answer in NX form? Yes, sir. Okay. 
Yes, sir. Or index form, sorry. Okay. So can kind I of, do you understand you got to answer in index form and in index form? So kind of. Yes, sir. You understand how we got our answer in next form? Yes, sir. Okay, what I need you to do is I need you to um, take a picture of your work. You don't have your work. I'm going to take a picture of it now. Yeah, but you're supposed to then do that, Shekinah. Of. And every class you do that, you need to stop that. You understand me? Yes, sir. Come on, Mara. When I ask for the work, send it. I don't know if you like can we talk. I just it's not cool. Stacy, are you done? I mean, not are you done? Do you understand how we got the index form? Yes, sir. All right, good. Okay, so now, um, Chardonnay, can you answer B? What does this number represent? How are we gonna get that? Shadney, Shadney, are you there? Did you call me? No, Shadney, Shadney. Yes, sir. Shadney, are you there? Where's Shadney? I don't know, maybe I'm. Uh, um, um, Internet is freaking out. Um, Ajani, do you understand? Do you know how to um, do two times two times three times three times five? Johnny, are you there? Where's the Johnny? Yes, sir. Do you understand how we can get B? Say, what does this number represent? Yes, sir. Okay, tell me. Go ahead, how are we going to get it? You know? Multiply. You multiply okay. the answer. Okay, so what is two times two? That's going to be what? Four. Four, very good. What is three times three? That's going to be? Nine. Nine, and we bring down the? Five. Five, very good. Now, what is four times nine? Thirty-six. 36, very good. And we do 36 times five. And what is 36 times five? That's gonna be what? What is 36 times five? 180. 180, very good. So we have 120, uh, 36 multiplied by five. So. Oi. We have 36 multiplied by five. What is five times six, everyone? What's gonna be what? 30. 30, very good. Put the zero down. We put the three above. What is five times three, everyone? 15. 15, what is 15 plus 3? 18. 18, very good. So that's how we get it. So we get 36 times 5, which is um, 180. So when they say, what does this number represent? They're asking us to take um, what we've got up here 
and multiply it all together to get our final answer of 180, 180. So that means that this number, two times two times three times three times five, that is the prime factorization of 180, right? So that's how it will be multiplied all the way. So, um, Chai, can you explain how we got 180? By multiplying all the numbers together. So I we first multiply two oh, yeah. times two, which would give us four. Mm -hmm. Then we multiply the three times the three, which would give us nine. And then we bring down the five. Mm -hmm. Then we multiply four times nine, which will give us 36. Right. Then we bring down the five. Yeah. Then we multiply 36 times five, which would give us 180. Very good. Very good. Um, Angel, do you understand how we got 180? Where's Angel? Angel, are you there? Yeah, we have an Angel. Okay, that percent. Um, do you understand how we got um, 180? Yes, sir. Good. How about you, um, Clement? Yes, sir. Good. Um, Ciara? Ciara Reckley? And Dwayne, Dwayne, do you understand how we got um, 180? Yes, sir. Um, Dwayne, you still didn't send me your work. I can't right now because I'm in the bathroom. Um, when you come out about it, then make sure to send the work, please. Yes, sir. Um, Dion, do you understand how we got 180? Yes, sir. Okay, explain how we got 180 to me, please. Okay, so first you multiply um, two times two, which is four. Mm -hmm. Then you multiply three times three, which is nine. Mm -hmm. Then you carry the five down. Mm -hmm. So after you do that, you multiply four times nine, which is 36, and you bring the five down again. And then you multiply 30, I mean, five times 36, and you will get 180. Very good explanation. And Navea, can you explain how we got 180? Navea? Um, so basically what you do is two times two, which is four mm -hmm. um, times three times three, which gives you nine and you bring down the five. Four times nine gives you 36 times five, which gives you 180. Very good. Um, Shah, I think you can explain how we got 180. We got 180 by timesing the two times two, which could give you four. And then we also did three times three, which gives you nine. And then we, bring, we brought down the five. And then we multiplied four times nine, which is 36. And then we bring, brought down the five again. And then we did 36 times five, which would give you 180. Okay. All right. I need you all to take a picture of your work and send it to me via WhatsApp. Again, take a picture of your work and send it to me via WhatsApp. That's the second portion. Uh, because we are going to, what we want to do is we're going to move on to English. So I need you to take a picture of your work and send it to me via WhatsApp again. Take a picture of your work and send it to me via WhatsApp. That's everyone, please. Take a picture of your work and send it to me via WhatsApp. Did everyone, I send please. My work. I send
Oh, yeah, and take a picture of your work and send it to me via WhatsApp. Um, Rashad, we have the equal signs right now. Don't forget the equal signs. I remember Rashad wants you up. Um, Rashad, you need to you need to use a ruler when you're drawing these tables. Use a ruler. So, all right. So we're gonna move on to English language in about five minutes. All right. So I need everyone to take a picture of their mask notes and send it to the card and then take a picture of your mask notes and send it to your WhatsApp. Again, take a picture of your work and send it to me via WhatsApp. Again, take a picture of your work and send it to me via WhatsApp. All right, so again, take a picture of your work and send it to me via WhatsApp. Again, take a picture of your work and send it to me via WhatsApp. All right, so we can start off with English. All right. All right, so, okay, good. All right, let's move on to English language. I know we are like three minutes early, um, but let's begin. Um, before we begin, I want us to read something. So let me put it out. So you don't have to write this down. And you don't have to write it down, but I just want us to read it. Um, again, you don't have to write this down, please do not write this down, but I just want you to read it uh, with me. Well. I want us to read it together. But again, don't write it down. I just want you to read it so you can understand what we are talking about today. Right?
All right, so let me ask the question. When you, when we, um, when we say autumn, right? What do we mean by autumn? You know what do we mean by autumn? Fall. Say it again. Fall. Fall, very good. And what is fall? What is fall? I want to get out, so don't be shy. What is fall? No one know what fall is? The season between winter and summer. Okay, so fall is definitely one of the seasons, right? And if we look at it, let me um, show you. Let me just use a, like, a, um, Excuse me, Mr. Patil. Go ahead. Um, what subject is this? This is English. Okay, thank you. All right, so let me see if I can show you. Um, fall. Not like, yeah, it's going to be autumn. So this is what autumn looks like, right? Hopefully you can see that's like fall. So that's when um, the green, the green leaves these are one screen, now turn um, orange, red. This is fall, it's the season of the year, right? One of the seasons of the year. So this is what we mean by autumn. So inside the little thing that we're gonna read is gonna say autumn. So I just want you to know what we mean by autumn for those of you who don't, who don't know. Um, so let's read it. Um, I'm gonna ask um, Dion to read it. He's gonna be one of the persons who wanna read it. Um, my probably have like three people, three persons read it. So go ahead, Dion. You could read it. Yes, yeah, so go ahead. I'm right off. Okay, read it. The, for me. the first um, the first brushstroke of autumn manifest manifest in the foliage foliage. The the foliage where the green canvas of summer begins to, to yield to a petal of warm earthy tones. The leaves once blush and vibrant. Bird Is it right, Mr. Blake? Now transforms into a, into a breathtaking medley, medley. Verdant, of it's verdant. Verdant, like a mm -hmm. verdant. Now transforms into a breathtaking medley of red, orange, and yellows. Yellow. Each tree becomes a living canvas in branches, adorned with adorned. A, adorned with a kaleidoscope. Kaleidoscope of colors that dance in the gentle breeze. The sunlight fil filtering through the foliage. Foliage. Impact, the foliage imparts a warm. Amber glow casting eternal no ethical ep ethical um, no, ethereal. embrace ethereal. ethereal yeah ambience ambience that box that box the surrounding in a soft golden embrace fades fades the surroundings all right. All right, um, let's see. Dion, was that a tough read for you? No, sir, it's just that I'm very tired and my eyes need to get tested. I'm on my phone, so I had this moment. Okay. All right, let's go with Chardonnay. Read this for me. The first brush stroke of autumn manifests in the foot, foot, foliage. Foliage. Foliage, where the green canvas of summer begins to yield to a pl platelet of warm no. earthy no. palette oh. of warm earthy tones. The leaves once lush and verdant now verdant. transform. Ver verdant. Verdant now transform into a breathtaking medley of reds, oranges, and yellows. 
Each tree becomes a living canvas. It branches adorned with a kaleidoscope of colors that dance in the gentle breeze. The sunlight filtering through the fo foliage, foliage, uh -huh. foliage impacts a warm amber glow, casting an ethereal ambience that bathes the, that bathes the surrounding in a soft golden embrace. Very good. All right, and one more, I'm going to ask uh, Navea. Ms. Navea. Navea Gordon. I'm here. Good, can you read this in English, please? I only, I only want three people to read. You can read and we actually get the lesson. What up? You can read when we actually get into it. I only wanted three persons to read this. Go ahead, oh, yes, um, yes, go ahead, Navea. The first brush stroke of autumn manifests in the foliage where the green canvas of summer begins to yield to a palette of warm earthy tones. The leaves once lush and verdant now transform into a breathtaking melody of reds, oranges, and yellows. Each tree becomes a living canvas, its branches adorned with a kaleidoscope of colors that dance in the gentle breeze. The sunlight filtering through the foliage imparts a warm amber glow, casting an ethereal ambience that bathes the surroundings in a soft golden embrace. Excellent. Very good, Rita. Okay, so how would we describe, or should I say, what do you think about this paragraph? Honorable opinion. What do you think about this paragraph? What is this paragraph doing? It's very detailed. It's very detailed. Anyone else? Please answer me. Let's go. Anyone else? How would you, what do you think about this um, paragraph? If you don't answer, I'll call your name. It uses sensory details. It uses sensory details. Okay, anyone else? If I were to ask you, what type of essay you think this come from? What would you say? We did, so far we did narrative, we did, um, we did persuasive. But what type of, what type of- um, Descriptive. Descriptive writing. Very good. Everybody. Descriptive, descriptive. Why you say descriptive? Because it describes each season. It did, it doesn't describe each season. It's only describing one season. It's describing the how the leaves turn into the autumn colors. Okay, so it's very, very, very descriptive. So it says the first brush stroke of autumn manifests in the foliage where the green canvas of summer begins to yield to a palette of warm earthy tones. The leaves, once lush and verdant, now transform into a breathtaking melody of reds, oranges, and yellows. Each tree becomes a living canvas. Its branches adorn with a kaleidoscope of colors that dance in a gentle breeze. The sunlight filtering through the foliage imparts a warm amber glow casting an ethereal ambience that bathes the surrounding in a soft golden embrace. So when you read that, like you say, it's very descriptive. It talks about, you know, the first brush of autumn. And it talks about the, the reds, the oranges, the yellows. Talk about how it's adorned with the colitis. It's a very descriptive piece. So as you can imagine from this, we are going to be talking about descriptive essays because this um this reading is actually a paragraph from a descriptive essay describing uh describing autumn or describing fall so let us actually get into the lesson so let's head up and we're going to be looking at what type of essays descriptive essay descriptive essays very good so today is monday monday the 4th of december 2023. The subject is, of course, um, English language.
And the topic is definitely descriptive essays. Where's Jamon? Jamon, are you there? Jamon, are you there? No, not Jamon. There's a Jamon in this class. Jamon, are you there? Descriptive essay. And I come to that. Hello, Jamon, are you there? Nope, can't happen. All right, so descriptive essay. So when we look at descriptive essay, um, just from the name, you understand what it's talking about. It's basically an essay that thoroughly describes or thoroughly um, explains in detail the features of a product, the features of a person, the characteristics of an environment. Um, so it explains in great detail uh, and describes in great detail um, certain elements of a particular place, maybe a person, maybe a, a scene. Like it's basically there to describe um, anything in particular, whatever they ask you to do. So that's what we mean by a descriptive essay. So when you, I mean, if you choose to do an ex, a descriptive essay, you have to be very, very descriptive. I know that's, that's like saying the same thing twice, but a descriptive essay, you have to be very, very poetic and you have to be very, very, um, you can't leave, you can't be vague, you can't be broad. You have to, you have to explain it in great detail. So let's, let's start with the definition. So descriptive essays, write this down for me, please. Descriptive essays. Um, are a form of literary expression um, that seek to paint a vivid I see to see I see to paint vivid images right with words. These essays these essays transcend storytelling or transcends these essays transcend mere storytelling. and aims to immerse the reader in sensory experiences, creating a tapestry of emotions, sights, sounds, and textures. All right, so, so you, when you're writing a descriptive essay, you're not just like, so if I, if I say, for example, I'm telling a story, so I might say, okay, I went to the shop. What did you do yesterday? Okay, I went to the shop, you know, after that I went to the beach, then after that I did X, Y, Z. So if you're telling a story, um, typically you're stating what happened, one thing after the other, one thing after the other, right? And that's good. You could, you could, you could still tell a wonderful story by, you know, ordering your thoughts in chronological order. That's fine, but that's not a descriptive essay. A descriptive essay does more than tell a story. A descriptive essay try to immerse you into their essay. Like they try to, you know, using sensory details basically help you able to see what they are seeing, hear what they are hearing, taste what they are saying, taste what they are tasting, right? That's what it's there for. It's it's there to give you an experience. That's what we that's what um, descriptive essays are there to do. So when you ever, when you ever decide to write a descriptive essay, 
one thing you cannot do is you cannot be vague. You cannot be, um, you know, plain. You have to be very, very, very detailed and very, um, and very expressive and, and try to use sensory details, try to involve their sight, their sound, their hearing, touching. So descriptive essays use sensory details and they appeal to emotion and they um, help you to vividly imagine what's happening. So if you're writing a descriptive essay, say about your mother, like you're not just saying, oh, my mommy, she's a good person. I like her very much. No, you'd be very, very, um, you know, specific on the words that you use, you know? You know, if she's enthusiastic, how enthusiastic is she? You know, is she, is she just caring or is she, is she just caring to you or is she benevolent to other people? Like, you know, you have to be very, very descriptive and not just telling us what she has done, but, you know, being very detailed in the way that you explain it, all right? So what are some elements of descriptive, of a descriptive essay? So let's write that. Um, elements, elements of a descriptive essay. So if you wanna write a descriptive essay, what's some things that you need to um, keep in mind and you need to remember as you write a descriptive essay, right? Um, so the first thing is you need to make sure that you include, like you talk about, um, sensory details and, and imagery. Right? So sensory details and imagery. So at the heart, of every descriptive essay lies the incorporation of sensory details and vivid imagery. So they want you to they want you to see what they see. They want you to actually see it and imagine it, right? So if you are describing something, you are actually like trying to help us understand and see what you see, like you know, imagine that we are there, you know. So these elements or these um uh, yeah, these elements they they engage. Engage the reader's senses. Excuse me, Mr. Petit. Go ahead. May I use the bathroom, please? If you can. Allowing them not only to experience Allowing not only them not only to experience, or allowing them not only to read, right? But experience um, I should say allowing not them not only to read about an experience. But To feel and envision them. And that's when you know you're a right, a good writer. Like when when um when when we when it's not like you're just stating a bunch of facts, right? But we can actually see what you're seeing, you know, we can actually feel what you're what you're feeling, all right? Like that's how you know that you really, really express yourself. So um, let's, let me give you an example. So let's say that I said that, um, I can put inside the chat. I said that the, the, the flower is beautiful. Okay, the flower is beautiful. 
Now, is that descriptive enough? Right? I have the flower is beautiful. Is that descriptive enough? Would you all say? No, sir. No, no. Anyone? Else? Okay, so that's all you do. Inside the chat, inside the chat, I need you to fix it. If I say the flower is beautiful, I need you to fix that sentence so that it'll be more, what should I say? It should it'll be more detailed. So every one of you go inside the chat, fix that sentence. I have the flowers beautiful. You say that's not enough. So what more can you add to that sentence to make sure it's more descriptive? Okay. So I need you to put your hands inside the chat. For me. I have the flower is beautiful. Tell me what more I should add to make it more descriptive. Okay, so uh, for example, we have the flower is beautiful. Put inside the chat, no one is answering. I need you all to answer. The flower is beautiful. That's the first one. But what can I do to make it better? Put your hands inside the chat, please. Put your own sentence that you would add to make it better. Okay, thank you, Chardonnay. The flower is beautiful because of its vibrant colors and sweet smell. Okay. The flower is beautiful with its red petals shining as the sunlight hits directly on them. Very good. That's, that's more descriptive. Anyone else? Put your hands inside the chat, please. I only have Nevea. Excuse me, Mr. Go ahead, Angel. Um, may I use the version, please? Yes, you can. Okay. I need the rest of you to answer. I only have Nevea and Chardonnay. So, but did you go repeat the question, please? I have the flower is beautiful. I need you to add more to that sentence to make it more descriptive. Okay. Yes, yeah, sir. And put your hands inside the chat. That's what I say. So, where is uh, where is Casey? Casey, where's your answer? I don't want to write it right. The flower is, is colorful, glowing vibrantly. The flower is colorful, glowing vibrantly. That sentence is missing something. It doesn't make sense. The flower is cut. The flower is colorful, glowing vibrantly. No, no, no. That, that needs some work. That doesn't make sense. The flower is beautiful for its rosy red petal and its sweet smell. Um, I mean it's chai. That sentence don't make no sense. The flower is beautiful because the rain came down. I made its petal very. The, please make sure I check over your work before you send it. It's all I'm missing some stuff. The flower is beautiful because the rain came down. I made it petals very shiny. Shiny? That don't make no sense, Jevin. The flower is beautiful. The flower, the beautiful flower has many vibrant colors and unique pattern. Very good. That's good. The flowers has many. Very good. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. The flower is beautiful like the vibrant sunset. The flower is beautiful like the colors of a vibrant sunset guiding down into night close this is very close you can say the flower is beautiful like the colors of a vibrant sunset guiding down oh into the night into the night okay all right so i like your attempts i like your attempts to try it so let's make it more descriptive so let's make it more descriptive so instead of saying the flower is beautiful can say can say the flower has um uh, maybe you can say velvety petals.
and I'll settle, sweet fragrances, which surpass, surpasses the radiant hues of Flowers, velvety petals, subtle fragrances. Yeah, let me fix that. Let me change it. Flower has velvety, um, petals, um, sweet, subtle fragrances. Let me just leave it at that. So that's more descriptive. It's not um, rigorous, but instead of saying the flower is beautiful, you can say the flower has velvety pe petals and sweet fragrances. So what do we do there? Instead of just uh, instead of just saying the flower is beautiful, we add a little more descriptive word to it. You could say the flower has velvety petals and, and sweet subtle fragrances. So that's being more descriptive, right? Um, number two, every sensory, every um, descriptive essay um, is specific. Okay, so- Mr. Petit. Uh huh. Question: Are you typing answers in the chat or are you writing them in our book? No, we. No, no, no. You're writing in your book the notes. I just wanted you to write that. Um, that example. That uh, I just wanted you to write that particular one in in, your, in the chat. But you're writing what I have on the screen in your book. Yes, this is what I want. But this, this, will you say more descriptive? Yeah, you write that too. We typing them in our book. No. Yeah, you're writing that in your book. Yeah. Everything I have on the screen, you write in the book. So specificity and precision. So descriptive essays have to be specific. And that's what make it, that's what makes it detailed because it's specific, right? And so descriptive essay, or you could say descriptive. Essays derive on specificity so vague if you are vague and general right vague and general language Lacks what the power to immerse the reader in the intended purpose. So you have to be specific, right? So specific, you can't be vague, you can't be general, you can't say. Oh, how was your day? Oh, my day was good. Like good could mean so much things. So you have to be specific. What happened that made it good? Was it fantastic good? Was it, you know, you know was it exciting good? Was it, you know, surprisingly good? Like what made it good? You know, so you have to be very specific in the words that you use and the words that you choose, right? Because if you're vague and you're general, like, you know, it's not going to give it that 
that that um that that push and that strength that it needs. All right. What's also very good to use is you can use figurative language. So use of figurative language. So um, even some of you did it when I asked you to be descriptive. You, you thought you were simile and stuff like that. So use of figurative language. And so we could use similes, metaphors, all those stuff. So to make our writing more descriptive. So metaphors, similes, um, and other forms of figurative language serve as potent tools in descriptive writing. Um, they add layers of meaning and evoke emotional responses. So that's very good. So you can um, add, should I say, add figurative language to your descriptive essay to make it more descriptive. So what can we do to make our, what are elements of descriptive essay? We need it to, we need it to, we need our sensory details and imagery. We need our specificity and precision. And we need to use figurative language, right? To make sure that we are on track. Um, So the next part of our descriptive essay, the fourth part, is you need your work, your descriptive writing, you need it to be um, organized. So organization and structure. All right. So if your writing is well organized, then it'll be it'll be more, that's when, if your writing is, is well organized and when you are trying to convey things to your writer, it'll make sense. So a well organized, not, yeah, when you're trying to convey stuff to the reader, not the writer. So a well organized structure is crucial for the success of descriptive essays. Um, number, number five, since I don't have enough time, I'm just gonna go quickly over them. Number five is going to be Um, appeal to emotion. So when you're writing your um, descriptive essays, try to, you know, get, get the emotions involved because well, obviously you're describing stuff. So descriptive essays, essays, aim to elicit um, an emotional response. From, from the reader. Whether it's, whether it's, um, whether it's, uh, let's see, whether it's a sense of awe, That means that you're actually inspired by this piece, where there's a sense of nostalgia, reminds you of, you know, something that you've done before, something that you've seen before. Um, tranquility, peace, right? Or excitement. So you're trying to evoke some set, some sort of 
emotion, all right? The writer, crafts the narrative to resonate with the reader's emotion. All right, and so that's that's where we're gonna end right there. So give me one element of a descriptive essay. Can anyone can give me really one element of a descriptive essay? Anyone can answer, give me one element of a descriptive essay. Use of figurative language. Use of figurative language, very good. Anyone else? Give me one um element of a, of a descriptive essay. Sensory details and imagery. Sensory details and imagery, very good. Appeal to emotion. Appeal to emotion, very good. Anyone else? Or organisms. Organ organization. Organization and structure. Very good. Anyone else? Appeal to emotion. Appeal to emotion, very good. So what do we mean um, based on what I told you, um, what do we mean? What do we mean by? What do we mean by um, a descriptive essay? What is meant by a descriptive essay? An essay that describes something. An essay that describes something. Okay. Anyone else? An essay that immerses the reader with um, vivid images in their head. Very good. How is a descriptive essay different from a narrative essay? Descriptive uh, essays. Oh, go ahead. Descriptive essays are more where you are describing of what's going on in your essay, okay. while narratives you're just um writing a regular paragraph. So with narrative, you're just trying to tell a story, right? You're just That's trying to tell a story. Um, excuse me, Miss Bedin. Go ahead. May I be excused because I have to go home and I got my Grammy. I have to be on the road, so I won't be around any internet um internet access. Um, when are you gonna take the picture of your work? When I go home. All right. So. So. All right. So. So yeah, let me. I was explaining what's the difference. The difference between a narrative essay and a descriptive essay is that a narrative essay just tells a story okay but a descriptive essay well that basically describes in great detail something all right so let's um let's do the great exercise we only have a few more moments to do it so um let's go uh, let's do a great exercise I'm gonna take a picture of this for those persons who are not finished with this. I'm gonna take a, a picture of it to put it inside a chat. So great exercise. Number number one. Instructions. Circle. The graph option.
So I'm going to give you several multiple choice questions and you're going to circle which one is the right one. All right, so the first one says, uh, what's the purpose of, the primary purpose of sensory details? Is it A, to confuse the reader, B, to engage in, uh, to engage the reader senses and create a greater experience? Is it C, to provide a logical sequence of details? Or is it D, to emphasize the importance of, sorry, of the characters. All right, that's question one. What's the purpose of sensory detail, sensory detail and imagery and descriptive writing? That's the first one. Please write the question as well as the answers, please. Again, write the options as well. Uh, number two. All right, number two says, what is, what, do, what role do similes, metaphors, um, another figure of language, what's, what's their role in the text? Is it A, they make the text essay more boring? Is it B, they are later meaning and emotional responses? Or is it D, they are unnecessary in descriptive essays? All right. Again, write this down and circle the one that is the correct answer. All And then number Question C says, which of the following is an example of a more descriptive element or a descriptive statement according to the information given in the passage? All right. All right, that's all the space I have. So I only give you all three questions. All right, once you finish with this work, take a picture of it and send it to me via WhatsApp. Again, once you finish with the work, take a picture of it and send it to me via WhatsApp. The first question says, 
What is the primary purpose of sensory fields? And a vivid imagery in this descriptive essay. Is it A, to confuse the reader, B, to engage the reader's senses and create a vivid image and create a vivid experience? C, to provide a logical sequence of events or a detailed book to emphasize the importance of characters. Number two, what role do metaphors, similes, and other speculative language play in descriptive writing? Is it A, they make the essay more boring, B, they describe the reader from the main theme, C, they add layers of meaning and emotional responses, or D, they are unnecessary in descriptive essays. Number three, we do the following as an example of a more descriptive statement according to the information given. A, this, the, the cityscape is nice. B, the cityscape is filled with towering skyscrapers, glittering lights, and bustling streets. Um, B, the cityscape is big, or C, the cityscape, I mean, C, the cityscape is, B, is big, and D, the cityscape is interesting. All right. So, which one? All right, good. Once you venture to work, take a picture of it via WhatsApp. Again, once you venture to work, take a picture of it via WhatsApp. Again, once the temperature will take a picture of it and send it to me to what's up. Um, where is Dwayne Sue? Dwayne Sue, are you there? Yes, sir. Um, Dwayne, I need you to take a picture of your work right now and send it to me. Finish or not, I need to see what you are so far. Yes, sir. We always have some lie of this week. Again, once you venture to work, take a picture of it and send it to your WhatsApp. All right, again, take a picture of your work and send it to me via WhatsApp. Again, once you finish, take a picture of your work and send it to me via WhatsApp. It's only three questions. Make sure I write the questions as well as the options. And then take a picture of your work and send it to me 
Yo, yeah, what's up? Um, Shadna, are you finished? Uh, last question. Okay. Um, Nabea, are you finished? Yes, sir. I sent the work to you. Okay. Um, yeah, Ashley, are you finished? Yes, Kiazmi. Oh, Navea, I need the I need the notes as well. By the way, please send the Kiazmi. I didn't no. Navea, write the options as well. Write the options as well. That's what I said, Navea. And also send the, the the notes, please. Um, where is um, where is um, where's Dwayne? Where's Dwayne? Yes, sir. Um, where's the notes I asked you for? My phone that I have you added on, I dropped it a few times in that book. I have to use my mom's phone to send the notes. And, and where's the phone? It's charging. Okay. All right, I need you to take a picture of your work and send it to me via WhatsApp. I said, everyone, make sure I include the notes as well. You have to include the notes as well. Again, take a picture of your work and send it to me via WhatsApp. Make sure that you include the notes as well. Again, take a picture of your work and send it to me via WhatsApp. Again, take a picture of your work and send it to me via WhatsApp. So, Lonnie, we're receiving it from some of you. I need the rest of you to send in your work.
All right. Anyone has finished with their work and send me the, the photos? Anyone finish? Is there anyone who's finished? I'm done and I sent in my work too. Okay. Anyone else finished and sent in their work? Um, I'm also done. I sent it to you. Okay. Leanne, take a picture of your work and send it to me. Yeah, what's up? All right, so let's answer these questions. All right, uh, which all of, let's read number one. Rashad, can you read number one? Rashad? Jai or Rashad? Rashad, Rashad. Yeah, so question one. What is the primary purpose of sensory detail and vivid imaginary in description in descriptive essays, A, to confuse the reader, B, to engage the reader's senses and create a vivid experience, C, to provide logical sequence of events, D, to emphasize the importance of characters, I mean characters. All right, this word has imagery, not imaginary. So. I say that, my apologies. Okay, so thank you for reading. Which I love for number one, what's the purpose of sensory details? B. B, very good. I B. B, B very good. Uh, anyone, B. anyone else put B? I did. Very good. If you put B, tick it. Yeah. To engage the reader sense and create a vivid experience. Very good. Again, if you put B, tick it for me. Number two, what role? Do metaphors, similes, and other figurative language play in descriptive writing? C. C, very good. C. They are days of meaning and evoke emotional responses. Very good. They are days of meaning and evoke emotional responses. Anyone, anyone got that right? No, for number three. I mean, for number two. Yeah. They are two months. Anyone else? Good. Number three. Do the following is an example of a more descriptive statement according to the given information. Is it A, the cityscape is nice. B, the cityscape is filled with towering skyscrapers, glittering lights and bustling streets. C, the cityscape is big. Or D, the cityscape is interesting. B. That's more descriptive. Which one is more descriptive? B. B, very good. B. B, B is correct. If you got B, please take it. Anyone got all right? All Me. Right. I, did. I did. I did. I did. I did. Come on. I did. I did. I did. I did. All right. Okay, very good. Um, if you finish with your work and, and took a picture of it and sent it to me, then you can go. Only if you only if you sent your work in, then you can go. All right, for those who have finished their work and sent it, then you can be. If not, please. Excuse me, Mr. Vadeep. Go ahead, Angel. Um, can you send me the quizzes from Thursday and the work? Because I was not there. Yeah, I could do that. Okay, thank you. All right, take a picture of your work and send it to me via WhatsApp again. Take a picture of your work and send it to me via WhatsApp. If you have if you are not finished with your work, then you can't leave. But if you are finished, then you can go. You have to take a picture of it and send it to me before you go.
Sending it right now, Mr. Bati. Mr. Bati, I send you all my work. Good night, sir. Good night. Yes, Sabria.